Hey, welcome to another video from Custom Excel Spreadsheets, where we help make your life easier and your business better. Today, we're going to be diving into a profit and loss for business uh, spreadsheet. And in a previous video, which I'll link in the description and hopefully is showing up on the screen right now, I showed you exactly how to build the spreadsheet that's in front of us here. But I ended up getting several requests to make a video that shows how to summarize this uh, monthly or quarterly. So today, what I'm going to do is take this starting point of a profit and loss video. If you need help on creating that, just check out the video I just mentioned where I walk you through step by step exactly how to pull this together. Uh, so, but with this as a starting point, how could you adjust this to show quarterly and monthly profit and loss statements? So it's actually pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and dive into it right now. I'm going to build it out live so you'll see exactly the steps that go into it. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is create a copy of the and what's the annual profit and loss statement right here. So to do that, I'm just going to hold down control on my keyboard, left click and drag that tab and then drop it there. I'm going to change this to be the monthly P&L and just rename that tab really quickly. And now we're set up. Now we can adjust this to be our monthly one. So what I'm going to do is just insert a bunch of columns because I'm going to end up making these the columns of the month and we're going to repurpose some of these columns. So this will be a January column, February and so on. And Excel is pretty smart, so we can select those two and drag it over and get us to December. Love it when a plan comes together, uh, right where we need to be. Okay, so January through December right there. And now we're ready to get started building this out where it will automatically return uh, all of these values for each month of the year. And as you'll see, we'll really just be relying on one big formula in particular, and that is the sum ifs formula. So to do that, we're going to need some dates for it to work around. So it needs to understand, well, what's the first date in January, the last date in January. One easy way to do that is just to insert a couple of columns with, or rows rather that will later hide. Uh, I do keyboard shortcuts a lot without thinking about it. Uh, so Alt IR will insert another row. You can also right click on a row over here and insert a new column if you need to. Uh, and so what we're going to do is just put the starting date. So this is going to be a 2024 um, year spreadsheet. So I'm going to do one one. 20, whoops, January 1st, 2024 as the start date. And then our end date, you could manually type in 131, 2024, but then you're gonna have to do that all the way across. I like shortcuts. And also when you update the spreadsheet for 2025, now you've got to update all those. So I just want to be able to type in one date, have everything else populate. To do that, I'm going to use the end of month formula or EO month. And all you have to do is pick the start date as the helper here is telling you and tell it how many months forward you want to project. I don't want to go forward any month. So I'm just going to do zero and it's going to give me the last day in that month, January 31st. Now I can do a formula that just adds one to that to get me into February 1st and copy over the end of month formula. Now I've got two formulas that I can copy all the way across the sheet and I've got uh, all the dates I need. And next year when this changes to 1-1-2025, change one date and everything looks good. Okay. So, and we could even tie that to a drop down where you select 2024 and it's a little bit smarter than this, but, uh, another video. Okay. So now that we've got all of those dates entered in, we're ready to set up our sum ifs formulas to do that. We're going to, uh, begin in January, uh, really quickly, just to give you a layout of this spreadsheet in case you're not super familiar with it. Haven't watched the previous video. Uh, what we have here is just sales revenue. So this is all of the places, all of the different services. Maybe if you have breakdowns, different sources of revenue, um, this would be the cost of sales. So the costs associated with those individual services or categories, then some operating expenses. And as I showed you in the earlier video, you can have whatever categories you want, set this up any way you want. And the formulas I'm about to show you will work no matter how you do that. Okay, so it's pretty sim simple. We're going to do a sum ifs formula. And what we're going to do is go get our sum range. This is revenue section. So we're going to go to the revenue tab. And the sum range we want is column D. We want to get all of those, uh, all of our sales. So if I stop there, it would just give us all the sales for the year. But we want it broken down by uh, the particular month that we're in and the sales category. So we want to apply those ranges. So the first range we're going to look at is the date. So I want to see is the date uh, greater than or equal to, and in this case, we have to put this in quotes for Excel to understand it. So greater than or equal to, close my quotes, the and symbol, that's gonna sort of concatenate or bring those two together. Um, so is the date greater than or equal to January 1st? And we're gonna add another criteria, is the date, comma, quotes, less than or equal to, and in, what we want to check if it's less than or equal to, of course, is that ending date of the month. Okay, so if I stop there, which I'll do for a second just to see, uh, it's going to return the 
total sales we had in January, but I don't want just the total sales, I want the sales for this particular service. So I'm gonna add in that last criteria just by adding a comma. You can see now I'm in criteria range three. That would be the category. And I want that category to match whatever is right here. Okay, so now that I have all that set up, I'm ready to go. The only thing I wanna do is make sure I have the right dollar signs in, the cell reference um, around these formulas so that as I copy it across, it doesn't uh, move in ways I don't want it to. So I don't want the rows to change. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the rows on those. I do want the columns to move across, so that's what I wanna update there. Uh, conversely, for the category over here, I wanna fix the column and let the row change. So you can see me doing that there. Okay, so now that I have that, technically I can copy that one formula and paste it all the way across there. And it's gonna automatically, that's just one formula, works for everything. Um, now, if you don't like having these zeros, you can either hide these rows, or if you really didn't like that, you could do an if formula that checks if that whole thing um, is greater than zero, than uh, or not greater than zero, then leave it blank. Uh, another simpler way would be check if this equals blank, then display blank. Otherwise, do the big sum is formula, and then close that parentheses. Okay, so now if I take that and copy it across, you can see I've got some blanks there instead of the zeros. Okay, uh, now this sum formula, I just wanna go ahead and copy that all the way across to December. We're not gonna be using either of these columns over here. We're not doing a budget for this. We're really just interested in what actually happened. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those columns over there. Okay, so now we have that set up. We have to do the same thing for the uh, expenses now, the cost of sales and categories and so on. So that'll, again, just be one other formula we have to write, and we'll be able to copy it in all of these places uh, to do everything we need. So I'm gonna move pretty quickly on this one because it's exactly what we just did up top. Okay, so sum range is going to be now the expense tab and the expense table, getting those amounts over there. And I wanna apply sort of those same categories. So I'm gonna do the date range. I'm just doing a kind of trick there that I'll maybe explain in a second. Um, okay, so that is not gonna be correct, obviously, because I just entered in some random things. What I sometimes do just to make it easier is I just type in uh, cell references and then come back to the tab and I can drag them to be wherever they're supposed to be. Okay, so now I've got that set up. I just need to add in my greater than equal to uh, conditions. So I'm checking is that greater than or equal to the start date and then is it less than or equal to that start date Okay, so now that's looking good, and I just have to add in these dollar signs. Okay, um, I'll add in the if formula as well to check if this is blank. Okay, now with that in there, I can copy it all the way across to December. And not only that, but I can take it down here and use it all down here as well. So I'm gonna put it in these categories all across there. And now I just need to copy my other formulas across. I put my dollar signs in the exactly wrong place. Okay, um, one quick shortcut on that is you can hit the F4 key to sort of toggle around with those um, a little bit quicker than having to reach for the uh, shift dollar sign. So I use that quite a bit. And I'm just pasting those uh, formulas in here. Okay, so now we've got uh, dollars showing up as we should. And I can hit F2 is what I'm doing here to uh, sort of explode that formula and see what it's referencing, making sure that it's moving across the way that it's supposed to. And it is, so that's good. Okay. All right, so now we have our uh, monthly PL statement right here uh, for the whole year of 2024. Again, I would want to hide those just to kind of clean it up, but I've got January through December. I can see how things are looking on a monthly basis. If I want to do the same thing for quarterly, I would now just copy that monthly one and hit yes to all. Okay, so I'm going to make this the quarterly PL. And now it's really easy because I pretty much have everything set up that I need. The only thing I need to change here is making these quarters. So um, let's say I make this Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Those are all we're gonna need. We don't need any of those. Okay. 
And now we just have to change these dates and literally everything else is automatic. So for this one, I want it to go from January 1st to, and this is where this uh, same formula is really helpful because I just need to put a three in there. Uh, nope, a two, January, February, March for the first quarter. And I just want to copy that across. Okay, so you can see I've got March to January 31st, April to June, July to September, and October to December. And again, since we used formulas that use that, it's all automatic. So uh, we just, in about 30 seconds, got our quarterly roll-up figured out. So now we have it on a quarterly basis, all the same data. I looked at it a little bit different way. If you want, in another video, I can show you how to then take this and Demo or uh, visualize it so we can add a bunch of charts that show different trends and that sort of thing with a sort of dashboard that you can layer on top of your profit and loss spreadsheet. So if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about anything you saw me just do, also let me know. And I'll also put a link in this video where you can go and get a copy of this spreadsheet for free. So if you'd like to have this as a starting point to manipulate and change for your own business, you can use that link to access that. And don't forget to like, hit subscribe, and hit the notification icon as well for future updates and so on. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.